What's up guys, it's your boy, Barca Boy 103 Today we're going to be doing the match preview for Barcelona versus Real Sociedad in the quarterfinals of the Copa del Rey. We are only 4 victories away from winning our second trophy of the season. We are in the final 8 of the Kings Cup and we are one step away from being in the final 4. A very strong and informed Real Sociedad are now stepping in our way and preventing us from winning the Kings Cup for a record 32 times but before we get into it make sure you guys smash that like button down below let's try to get the 200 likes in this video be very much appreciated also if you're new make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already and let's get into it kickoff time for this match will be taking place at 9 p.m local time so your regular kickoff time in the couple of the raid that barcelona are usually used to and this match of course will be taking place at the spot of five cap now where our record attendance is expected we're expecting a full house for the quarterfinals that will hopefully all the coolers there will be training on Barcelona to push us for the victory and the referee for this match has been confirmed and on the pitch it will be Gil Manthana you can't get much worse than that maybe Mateo Laos is a bit worse so we've been stitched up and on the VR it will be Jose Maria Sanchez Martinez now on the screen right now is the bracket of the 2023 Copa del Rey alongside the Barcelona Real Sociedad match there's also the Madrid Derby in Real Madrid versus Atletico Madrid also soon taking on Sevilla and Valencia taking on Athletic Club so we do have kind of an idea who we're going to be expecting in the semi-final which I believe the draw will be taking place this Friday if of course Barcelona proceed we're getting you know slowly but surely winding down I think if Barcelona beat Real Sociedad our really only big threat is the winner of the Madrid Derby in Real Madrid Atletico Madrid we do have a very very high chance of winning the Copa again it's now down to the final moments of the competition where Barcelona tend to thrive the most let's now take a look at our opponents in Real Sociedad who at the moment in Spanish football are one of the most informed teams at the moment on a great winning streak and they're also playing fantastic football now the last time we faced them was actually in the second match of the season where we went and faced them at the Anoeta and Barcelona came out as 4-1 victors on the night the match was very very interesting of course Lundeth scored first it was a great assist by Alejandro Valde Alexander Isaac the Newcastle striker at the time he wasn't came back and got him uh, his team on the score sheet one of few goals that Barcelona have conceded so far in La Liga this season we've conceded six goals to Real Madrid and one of the other ones was to Real Sociedad but in the second half in the space of around 15-20 minutes Usman Dembele Lewandowski again and Alza Fati secured the first three points of the season for the Blau Grana. the lineup is on the screen can we see something similar to this lineup uh, tomorrow I don't think so this is it was Serge Stegen in goal Arujo Christensen Eric Garcia Balde Frankie De Jong Gabi Pedri Dembele Lewandowski and Ferran Torres of course the back five will be completely different the midfield three hopefully will be the same but the front three could be as well of course Ferran Torres is his first start be, you know before preseason all that sort of stuff so I think it'll be very very unlikely to see a similar team like that one on the right hand side but if that one on the right hand side can get the job done the one that we see tomorrow should be able to do so as well especially at home now Real Sociedad currently sit third in La Liga on 38 points after 18 matches they have 12 wins two draws and four losses we look at the last five games in the league five wins out of five the second best record in the league behind Barcelona four wins and one draw so they're the most informed team in Spanish football at the moment if you take a look at the last five matches in all competition in the last match they beat Rio Vallecano 2-0 they beat Mallorca 1-0 in the cup to reach the quarterfinals of course they won the best derby against Athletic Club by three goals to one they beat Almira 2-0 and they also beat around 32 uh, Cobo del Rey victory 1-0 against some second or third division team in Spanish football so let's quickly take a look at the last three matches in details firstly is that best derby where they did win 3-1 now Rio Sociedad that play in the 4-3-1-2 formation it's a very narrow formation they play a lot in the middle of the pitch and they rely a lot heavily on winning that midfield battle in this match they were dominant especially at the Anahueta in the derby and they walked away with three massive points next game was of course the round 16 match against Mallorca that got them to this point currently against Barcelona where they won 1-0 again at home at the Anahueta 
strong lineup or Yasbal coming back from a long term injury as well. Their captain. It was a dominant performance, but they weren't clinical kind of in front of goal. That's why they only walked away with the 1 0 victory. And finally, their game on the weekend is where they beat 2 0 Rio Vallecano. Now, Vallecano. Sometimes they're a good team, sometimes they're not, but in this match they did play well. There's Russo Sedad who played much better and walked away with three massive points in fantastic and dominant fashion. Now on the screen right now is the line that I believe that Russo Sedad manager Emmanuel Alguacil will select for this match. Firstly, Alex Ramiro in goal, a back four of Alestando, Zubedila, Lenormand, and also Rico, a midfield four of Zubimendi, Mikel Moreno, Bryce Mendez, and David Silva, and a front two of Mikel Oriazabal and Alexander Snorloff. Now, the question is really, will Takekubo play in this match? I have a funny feeling they won't. They could change formation, go with the three natural three forwards and Oriaza Ball, Snorloth, and also Takikubo. But I don't think El Guacil will change his formation and his tactics for a big game like this. That midfield four, by the way, is looking absolutely disgustingly strong. Silva, Mendez, Zumendi, and Moreno. Defense is, you could say, the weaker side of their game. They have a you know, decent goalkeeper, but Lino Mard, Rico, El Estondo is a very aging back four and can be got at. But I believe this is Real Sociedad's strongest lineup, and that's something that El Guacil could be picking for the match tomorrow. So overall, final thoughts on Real Sociedad. They're a very, very strong team and they're very well managed by their manager and you could say legendary manager, Emmanuel Alguacil. He won their first Copa, I believe, a few years ago in like 34 years. He's done well with them. He's got them in Europe. They play good football. They're always challenging for the league by mid-season, but they always have a drop-off later on. But at the moment, that drop-off hasn't come back yet. He's a very strong manager and knows the league very well. Doesn't have the greatest record against Barcelona, but manages always to put in the performance despite the fact of a defeat incoming for him. Plus to look out for again it's the whole team. They have a very very strong starting lineup, even a strong bench as well. Of course you have to keep an eye on this match on Martin Zubimendi there pivot who Barcelona of course are very very interested in signing Mikel Oriazabal when they're you know strong forwards David Silva legendary player of the game and also I think you get to highlight that midfield for again we talked about Zoom Mendy David Silva but also Brias Mendez and Mikel Moreno on Moreno of course when I come and wanted him very very heavily over the past few years very very strong box to box midfielder and Brias Mendez as well since his move from Celta Vigo to Real Sociedad he's been absolutely fantastic creative midfielder but probably most likely be playing in in that box to box role again defense is their weak point as they do have a decent goalkeeper so Barcelona really have to do is going to come down to unfortunately the midfield battle Xavi has to pick that right midfield to combat their midfield you can see a four midfield chosen by Xavi but I think their main thing to do is control the midfield and also when you create those chances in the final third they have to be Kind of cool because against Real Sociedad, they don't lead that many chances. Of course, in the past few games that they played, get a lot of clean sheets. They're going to be very, very difficult to break down. But the Cap New atmosphere, hopefully, we do have that advantage. But Real Sociedad, very, very strong team, and this will not be an easy matchup. Let's now take a look at the squad list. The squad list for this match has been released and confirmed, and it is as follows. Ter Stegen, Bellerin, Araujo, Busquets, Dembele, Pedri, Lewandowski, Ansu Fati, Ferran, and Akipenia, Christensen, Marcos Alonso, Jordi Alba, Kessie, Roberto, De Jong, Rafinha, Kunde, Eric Garcia, Balde, Gave, Pablo, Torre, and Arnaud Tenet. It is a fully fit first team squad with everyone at 100% capacity ready to fight for all titles remaining of the season this is rare for Barcelona to have everyone fit at this moment and there's no more niggling injuries no discomfort the whole entire first team of Barcelona is 100% fit Time now to get into Xavi's press conference reaction. This press conference this morning, of course, he was asked a lot of questions from the media about the current state of the team, the future of the club, January signings, some player fitness updates as well. Let's go ahead and see what the gaffer had to say this morning. He came out asking first about Real Sociedad, saying that it will be a great match, the game will be tough, and I'm sure the fans will enjoy it. He was then asked on who will be starting in goal for Barcelona, the second choice goalkeeper and Naki Pena, or the first team goalkeeper Mark andre Ter Stegen. He said we'll see tomorrow. The players don't know it and they won't know until tomorrow, a couple hours before the game. Xavi said that he knows what system he'll play, the tactics with the personnel is still yet to be decided. Then asked about the referees and I'm not worried about Gil Mentana being the referee, he's a professional, let's hope he's not 
not the protagonist in this match. He was then asked about the difference of Busquets and Zubimendi. Of course, Zubimendi, the Real Sociedad player, has been linked to join Barcelona to replace Busquets. He said the latter is quicker and has more physical capacity, whereas Busquets is more technical to more be able to face a great team with great players. In principle, not much will happen during the remainder of the transfer window. I've already said that I predicted a fairly calm market in terms of incorporation, but nothing is ruled out, but there's no news on our side. So Chavi is saying most likely in the last week of the transfer window, Barcelona will not sign anyone, but in the Mercado, you just never know. I always tell my players to forget about the referee because it's a situation that we cannot control. Then asked about the Barcelona Femini team, they've been eliminated from the Copa, the Copa del Rey, due to playing an eligible player to the disqualification of the Copa del Rinera is our mistake and we must accept it. La Real are dominant with the ball and they have a similar playing style to us. He then asked about Gavi and the comparisons that there have been in the media to Casemiro. He said when Gavi goes to the national team, everything is wonderful, but when he's at Barcelona, many don't like him and say he's too aggressive. What I want is for him to have the same desire or even more because he doesn't have a ceiling. So big praise there from Xavi. Then asked about Rafinha and him and over the past few weeks, he's getting a lot of assists, scoring some goals as well. He said that Rafinha is being decisive, he's scoring goals, he's dynamic, he's growing, making a difference at Barcelona isn't easy. And Rafa is doing it at a great job. Then asked about Barcelona's strong defensive course, six goals conceded in all in the in the league this season. Rock solid. But then he was asked about that. He said, to be honest, I think Ter Stegen's in his best moment I've seen him at Barcelona. He reminds me of the 2015 Ter Stegen. He's in his sweet uh, moment and he has a spectacular confidence as well. Then he was asked about the pivot. He was asked who could come in to replace Busquets, what he looks for in the future. He said that look, is there anything internally? He even said that Frankie can play as a pivot. It depends on the situation the game and the opponent but he's a total player i like him more as an interior but we always give him that freedom so chavi say look frankie can play there as a pivot but i prefer him in that right center mid interior position which means we decide a pivot he was then asked about uh you know trading over the past few days he was then asked about the finish of the squad so that everyone's fully fit he was also asked if we trained penalties so that we, yes we have practice penalties during today's training session and then asked about the future of Franck Kessier saying that at no time have I considered Kessier leaving his exceptional goal will be good against Ceuta he's a player I like and he gives us many variations in a game he also kind of confirmed that all the players are fully fit saying that all the players are fine having all of them available is a luxury he was then asked about Take Kubo of course when the star force of Real Sociedad formerly Barcelona and Real Madrid players that Take Kubo is a player who can make the difference I've always liked him I've followed him since his time here at Barcelona he's very talented and he's making a difference and lastly Xavi was ended off this press conference by asking about Alecron who of course the Barcelona B attacker is not in the squad list for this match and there is a reason behind it because I thought about giving him minutes the other day but I consider that it was a very complicated game for him of course against Getafe today he's not called up because he has a game with the youth team but he's a player that I like and he will continue to train with us in the first team for the foreseeable future until at least the end of the season and that concluded Chavi's press comments reaction had a match against Real Sociedad into tomorrow. the lineup prediction we're gonna start with the manager of course Chavi Hernandez I'm gonna try my best with this lineup it will be very difficult to predict of course the big game by this weekend against Gerona as well playing every other day rotation is needed you can't play your starting lineup every single week but of course it's a cup game one game only do or die and of course Chavi does have the objective of walking away with the victory and I think he will pick this lineup on the screen right now He'll go to Stegling goal, a back four of Kunde, Araujo, Christensen, and Alejandro Balde. Midfield three of Busquets, De Jong, and Pedri. And a front three of Usman Dembele, Robert Lewandowski, and Gavi. I do believe that Xavi will go with the forward midfield to combat, of course, the forward midfield of Real Sociedad. Now, firstly, back five. It's our best back five. Solid as hell. Can't see any other changes. I would watch out for Jordi Alba starting. Of course, Bali will sub off at halftime against Hatafe due to a tactical decision from Xavi. I'll keep your eyes on that. I think the only change in that back five is Jordi Alba coming in for Alejandro Bali. And of course, the big question mark around Araujo being fit or not. But everyone's saying right now, the reports in the media is that he will be playing in this game. On the other side, of course, Frankie de Jong, who is, uh, you know, could say a doubt. There is discomfort from De Jong and Araujo. But of course, Xavi did not play them against Hatafe during the weekend to have them fully rested, ready to go go for this game. Bustos, of course, will start in the pivot alongside Pedri. I think Gabi will be playing in that false winger position with Dembele and Lewandowski. The main reason being for two reasons. One, 
We also said that playing a four midfield, you want to combat that. You want to have, you know, go toe to toe with them. Secondly, Anzu Fati, Rafinha, Ferran Torres on absolutely poor, poor form. Anzu Fati played poor against Katafe. Rafinha is just up and down. And of course, Ferran is Ferran. So none of those three attackers show me, you know, an intent of why to start them. I think from Chavi's point of view, of course, I think Chavi's looking, look, the three of them are not on a great form. And also, it's probably better to play with the four midfield as well. If he does not pick a four midfield, I would get a bit worried. And also, I'd be very, very surprised as well. And this is something that Chavi Hernandez will select for this match. But of course, let me know you think Chavi's going to pick down in the comments below. Now, I'm going to show you guys my lineup, what I would do if I was the Barcelona coach. And I have made a few changes from Chavi's lineup prediction. I have gone with this lineup on the screen right now. And basically, I've made one change. I have brought in Rafinha for Sergio Busquets. Of course, meaning that I have not chosen a four midfield. I have gone with our traditional. 4-3-3. The reason behind it is mainly we are at the camp now. With the stadium behind us, I feel like going a bit attacking is a bit more important. I think that will leave Real Sociedad on the back burner. They'll leave them on the, they will be you know, cautious whether not to go on the counter attack or not to leave always space. I would pick Rafinha because I think out of Rafinha, Ansu Fati, and Ferran, Rafinha right now is the most in form and on point one currently. But I will be reluctant to do so, but I think this will be the best way moving forward, and especially if we go 1-0 up, 2-0 up, that's when you make that substitution, you bring on Kessie or Busquets, go with that four midfield, put Pedro or Gavi as that false winger, and then shut down shop. I think that will be very, very important, and also you can maybe even hit Real Sociedad on the counterattack as well. So my idea is that going on the front foot is important. I think Chavi will come with a bit of a conservative approach, saying that let's take our time with it, build up, break them down, and then get the goal. My idea is let's just go all in, go at them, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them first, get the goal, and then sit back, be conservative, and take our time. And that's the lineup that I would select for this match, but of course, you have to let me know. And that's the lineup that I would select for this match, but of course, let me know down in the comments below, would you rather pick my lineup or Chavi's lineup? Time now for my score prediction. What do I believe the result will be in this match? I think it will be very, very tight, end-to-end, -end, entertaining, but I do back my team, and I do think that Barcelona will win this match, and I have going Barcelona win this match by two goals to nil. I think the clean sheet will be the big question for Barcelona in this match. If we can get the clean sheet, I have no doubt we'll win. Of course, you know, the defense, Ter Stegen, Koundé, Araujo have come out saying over the past few weeks, if the defense keeps a clean sheet, we have no doubt in the attack to get the goals, and in the end, we end up winning. I think our defense in this match will be key. I think if Real Sociedad get that early goal, I think we're going to be on the ropes. I think it'll be vintage to Real Sociedad, but if Barcelona just play their game, take their time, and use that Camp Nou atmosphere, which will be packed, of course, for a quarterfinal in the Copa del Rey, I have no doubt Barcelona will win. I think if Chavi picks the right lineup, because with the forward in the midfield, BZ, you know, got combat in that middle of the pitch, we will win this match. Where I see this go wrong is that Real Sociedad get an early goal, Barcelona come out a bit sloppy, and then we're going to be spending the majority of the match trying to break them down, break them down, and they get a goal in the counterattack. Can Real Sociedad score in this match i think yes they're on great form right now their attack has been very very lethal but our defense has been very very solid it's gonna be a very very interesting match very very difficult i think it's gonna be hard to call it's end to end but i'm gonna be back in my team i'm gonna be back in barcelona and i have gone with barcelona winning this match by two goals to nil but of course let me know your score predictions down in the comments below so that's a match preview for barcelona versus real sociedad in the cobo del rey corner finals hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure to leave a like and of course leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discuss but the main thing i want to firstly of course is your score prediction and secondly on those lineups firstly would you rather pick my lineup or chavi's lineup what do you think chavi would go with what would you go if you were the manager leave me all your thoughts down below and of course make sure you guys subscribe down below as well if you haven't already and i'll see you guys tomorrow for the live watch along set the reminder on the screen and come and join me and watch the game with me follow chef for the match by match review so i'll see you guys tomorrow big game ahead this for me will determine if barcelona can win the Copa del rey or not not for our second trophy of the season i believe in the boards i believe in the cap now atmosphere and i think we will get the job done see you guys then take care and force a barca